Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now, ever since the dawn of Codec as one of the very top tier constructors on the world Sudoku scene, uh, we've been looking out for his puzzles. Um, what we should have been doing, I think, is revisiting puzzles he'd already published at the time of his birth. Um, and it seems that this puzzle here, which appeared back in November 2020 on Logic Masters Germany, um, has been attracting a lot of plaudits. It's called Embraced, I think because these arrow clues seem to be sort of hugging each other. Um, and we've had two recent requests to have a look at this puzzle on grounds of difficulty. So that's what I'm going to try and do today is to solve it for you. Um, I think it's four stars out of five on Logic Masters Germany, so perhaps not as difficult as the Star Trek puzzle I did yesterday, but no doubt tricky indeed. Um, now, Codec... Um, uh, made this puzzle as a tribute to some of the world's great constructors as well. This is a tribute to Fistemafel, Glum Hippo, and Resar. So goodness me, um, that is uh, that's plaudits indeed. Uh, and I'll read you the rules in just a second. A um, couple of updates first. Obviously, we've got the Miracle Sudoku app, uh, which um, uh, we've just had a big update for. Twenty new puzzles. So if you do own the app, um, definitely make sure it's up to date, and you'll find all those puzzles there. And it's the first of February today, and that means it's Groundhog Day tomorrow. But we've already released our Groundhog Day themed puzzles over on Patreon. So uh, do get over there. We've actually already had some correct solutions um, to those puzzles, um, but they are proving very popular. And we've, we need to thank Sed Holleson, um, the brilliant constructor for the Philipp from the Philippines, for his help creating them. Um, other than that, oh, we still not heard um, from Sting or Selena Gomez or um, actually Steve Martin has aged rather badly in this photo but we haven't heard from Steve Martin or Martin Short either so we're still we're still trying to find out whether Mark finished the cryptic crossword that Sting is clutching in his arm here faster than Sting did um, so if anyone knows let us know we're still waiting now what are the rules for codex puzzle we have got normal sudoku rules apply we have got digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in its circle and digits may repeat along an arrow. So let's look at an arrow. That means those three squares, whatever's in these three squares, you add them up and that's what has to appear in this square. But you can repeat a digit. Obviously you can't repeat those digits. That's not gonna, that's going to break the rules of Sudoku, but you could repeat those digits, for example. Um, and then we've got a knight's move restriction. So cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. We've seen this a little bit recently. So let's look at this square. Let's imagine that cell is a one. Now, if this was a chess knight, it could jump to a variety of different cells, all of these cells, in fact. And in this puzzle, none of these cells could be a one because that would, if you did put a one there, there'd be a chess knight's move apart and that is not allowed. So a little extra rule, do have a go at the puzzle first. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play, let's get cracking. <laughs> And as so often, <laughs> we have, we're faced with just nonsense, aren't we? Three given digits, none of them the same, so we can't use those. Even with the knight's move constraint, they are not going to help us. So I, th I think we have to get straight into the arrows. Um, right, so actually, as I was doing the example just now, I was thinking... Um, I was thinking I can't even write six, seven, eight, and nine into this. Normally with a three cell arrow, it's often the case that you can therefore conclude that this circle has to be at least equal to six because you could you have to put at least one, two, and three on the arrow. But here, because this arrow here pokes out of the box, these two cells can be the same. They can be tiny. And that's a two. That could be a four. Which is really rather upsetting. Um, now, I'm just wondering if this arrangement breaks this arrow instead. Oh God, I think it does, but it breaks it via, you know, it's horribly complicated to see why, because if you put one here and here, you now can't put one anywhere on this arrow. So, could you do two, three, and four is the question. You can't do two, three, and four because a two there actually sees this square by knight's move. So the best you're gonna do here is put threes and fours on the arrow and that will most certainly make that too large. 
So, yeah, all of this is just nonsense. This is nonsense. This is not helping us, I'm afraid. I don't think this is the way we have to think about the puzzle. Let's get rid of those. Um, oh, well, one, one sort of slightly fatuous uh, observation is that these digits have to be different because there are knights move apart. The same is true there. Um, yeah, actually, so maybe that's what we have to do is rather than focusing on a single arrow, maybe if I have to think of the symbols, you know, think of these two in a connected way, because those cells are all, they're all in the same row. So they all have to be different. So if we make those their minimum value, they'd be one, two, three, and four, that's 10. Uh, yeah, okay, that's a little bit more interesting because I can't make these two squares the same digit because if I do, there are knights move apart. So 13 is the minimum I can make these two cells add up to just sort of using the Sudoku and the arrow rules, sorry, the Sudoku and the knights move rules. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, no, and the other interesting thing, at least I find it interesting, is that um, so many conversations in my life where I've started like that, oh, the other interesting thing is, and people just like basically go to sleep, um, but the other interesting thing to me is that these digits can't all be different, can they? Because if they're all different, this, they would have to sum to a triangular number. They'd have to sum to 21. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 is the minimum we could make them. And that adds to 21. And there is simply no way to keep both of these cells down to a single digit total if we're trying to make them add up to 21. So there has to be at least one repeated digit in these yellow cells. And, well, it can't be... The, yeah, it can't be that one. So this digit, so whatever's in this, I'm just, just going to get rid of the um, sort of tentative digits there. This cell can't repeat within the structure of the arrows because whatever goes in there, let's color it in. It couldn't be in those squares by Sudoku. This square is in its box, so that's not possible. And this square is a knight's move away. So this one doesn't repeat. This one, Ah, that's annoying. This one, this one could repeat here, I think. Maybe by symmetry, can we rule out this one because it's sort of the equivalent? Oh no, bobbins, that doesn't work. I was thinking this one would work a bit like this one, but it doesn't because the silly arrow dips down into box five. Ah, so whatever goes in that cell can't go in those three or this one by knight's move, but this that could repeat. Oh no. Okay. So, all right. That's, that's not helpful. So this one can repeat. This one can repeat. That one. Oh, that one can repeat there. Oh Lord. Okay. So they can, there can be many repeats. I think that's what we can conclude. I don't actually think therefore beyond Oh, so do I have to actually, let me just think about that. Maybe, I, maybe I've maybe i been thinking too sort of micro and I need to think more macro. Maybe I have to, rather than just focusing on this sort of symbol, maybe I have to use both symbols together. Actually, that, not a, that's not such a stupid thought because one, two, three, four, five, these cells, are all on arrows and the same must be true presumably in row four two three four five all right yeah let's look at this so those squares what's the minimum i can make those five squares add up to as 15 if i make those one two three four and five i get to 15. now this little five here means I can't make those five squares add up to 15. The best I'll do is 16. Now that's already 31. 
and that is getting close to the maximum, especially as I haven't used those two cells yet. Because what's the, yeah, this is good. Okay, so what's the absolute maximum I can make those four cells add up to? Well, because these see each other via a knight's move, they can't be the same. So the maximum I can make this these two add up to is eight and nine. And similarly here, eight and nine again. So eight, nine plus eight, nine is 34. But I've already got 31 here. So these cannot be large, these have to be tiny. Thirty-one. So if if these can't be a repeated digit, if these can't be double one, these have to be a one-two pair. So actually, so let's look at that. Is it possible to put one in both of these squares? The answer to that is maybe. I don't quite know. Um, Yeah, okay, well, if you do, well, one thing we can say for certain, actually, let's just complete the logic, is that, is it possible for either of these strings not to have one in them? Well, clearly not, because if we try and make this 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, that will, that will add up to 20. We know the minimum for the other one is at least 15, so that's already 35 before you even get to you get to these extremi extremities and we've got to keep it to 34. So there does have to be a one in this string. There does have to be a one in this string. So where does the one go? If we try and put double one in the, in the perimeters here or in the sort of at the top and bottom of the, the arrow patterns, one can't go there. It can't go here by knight's move. So one would have to be in one of those. Oh, no, no, one can't go there by knight's move. One has to go here. So if these are both one, you have to put one here. And presumably that works by symmetry the other way around. One can't go there or there from this one. This one sees that one. Oh, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. So if you try and put two ones in these two cells, you end up with ones in those two cells which are a knight's move apart. So that does not, this is very good. I'm very pleased this doesn't work. Why am I pleased this doesn't work? Well, because if I can't put, if I can't make both of those squares one, I have to make them one and two. And now this, it's simply not possible. There are no degrees of freedom left. This is the only arrangement that will work for these cells because I can't make these bigger than 34. I've got 16 here, which is a minimum. I've got 15 here, which is a minimum. We can't put double one in there, so we put one and two in, and we get to 34. So this is it. We've got eights and nines in the circles. And that was quite complicated, but we have, we have at least deduced something. We haven't got a digit. We don't, don't think we're uh, luxuriating in a digit yet, but we have got pencil marks. So what do the pencil marks mean? They mean that there is no six here and there's no five here. Uh, no, no, they don't. Well, they do mean that, but they also mean, where do you put a six in row three of the grid? It's not in those squares and it's definitely not in this domino. So it goes there and I do have a digit. Um, the five doesn't work the same way the three rules three out of those two squares so now these two have got to be seven eight or nine there's definitely got to be a seven in the domino definitely worth keeping track of dominoes that can only take one digit in a knight's move puzzle because you can straight away rule seven out of these two cells if you try and put seven in that cell it rules a seven out of both of those um, now those squares are seven, eight, and nine. As so, oopsie, I don't want to do it like that. I want to do it like this. Um, right. 
So what do we do now? Um, I've got this six. There's a six up here. It still doesn't feel like it's the time to do Sudoku, does it? Four given digits now. Um, sorry about this. Let me think for a, a moment or two. Hopefully only a moment or two. What's this six doing? I mean, it does... If you're going to put these givens in, they must do something that's quite profound, mustn't they? Uh, I'm not seeing what that is, unfortunately. Uh, is there a way of telling which way round the one and the two go? that's a one let's look at that if this is one we can't put one here or here so one goes into one of those two squares ah that's that's interesting you can't put one there ah haha -ha, look if this is a one now I can't make eight or nine work on the arrow because this square can't be large enough that's this is what this six is doing Th if this had been able to be six you could have put one here, but because you can't, this doesn't work. So the only place you can put the one, if this is one, you have to put the one there, which means, and I suppose we have to have a one in this string because we know this is one, two, three, four, four, and six. One, two, three, four, and six. There's no one here, there's no one here. There's no one here because of the knight's move. So you have to put one. Oh, see, that, that works. Right, OK. You have to put one. If this is one, you have to put one here. You have to put one on the same arrow as this one. So this arrow will have a one on it, another one on it, and therefore it needs a six to get to eight. And it can have one. And this would be a two because of the knight's move constraint. So that's all a bit, well, it's interesting, but disappointing, isn't it? Because it works. Does it work the other way around? If that's a one, let me just look at that. Hang on. If this is a one, you've got to put a one in this string. Can't go there, there. Sorry, it can't go there or there because of the knight's move. And it, oh, and it can't go here because this one can't be a 5 or a 6. So if you try and put a 1 there, you can't get anywhere near 8 or 9 here. So you have to put 1 here. And you need a 1 in this string. So you've got no 1s in those squares. Ah, there you go. This is why it breaks. So if you try this the other way round, trying to put a 1 in here is possible. Absolutely it's possible, but it has to go on the same arrow as this one. And look, look at the options for what accompanies it. It can be no bigger than a five because of the six here. So you're end going to end up with two ones and a maximum of a five, which most certainly don't add up to eight. So this is, this is progress. Now we've got more digits. You can't put one here, that's got to be two. That must be one therefore, because we know these two have to add up to three. We know this can't be a one because then this would have to be a six, which it can't be. So there's no ones in any of those squares. This is a one. We know there's a one in this string of five cells. We've got, I need a one in this string of cells now. So it's not here by Knight's move from this one. It's not here by Sudoku. It's not here by Knight's move from this one. Um. Is there some other way we can do this now? No, this is this is a knight's move apart. I've got this wrong. Hang on. Why is that a knight's move apart? Have I made a mistake? Oh no. <laughs> One can't go here or here. Or or here. Or here, because this can't be a six. Ah no, I think I just put the one in the wrong place. If one is here, I need a one in these. One can't go here, here, or here. 
So one is, oh, this, yeah, okay, this works now, this works, because one has to be in one of those squares, but we know that arrow adds up to at least eight, so it has to have a six with it, because this arrow is going to be double one and then another digit, and the only digit that will work, oopsie, sorry, that's a one. These two squares are a one six pair. This is an eight, it's the only thing it can be, which means this is a nine by knight's move, and we, and no, we're definitely not cooking with gas, but we are at least, we've lit the fire. Um, and what do we do now? Having lit the fire, we have to make progress. So two. So this one adds up to, oh, I suppose, yeah, we can remove six from here, can't we? And here, we got a two, three, four, triple. But this has to add up to nine, and there's only two on the arrow so far, so this has to add up to seven, so this must be a three four pair, and we get an another we get another digit in the grid we get we know there must be a two in this string, and the two can't go here or here oh right, so the t so this uh, this arrow has a repeated two on it. Just as this arrow had a repeated one, you have to repeat two on this arrow. And that gets you to four, so you need at least, oh right, I see, this is very clever. So one of these two squares is a two, and then how are we gonna get to eight or nine? We're gonna need a four or a five, not a three. So neither of those two squares can be a three. You get a two, four, five, triple, and that square is a three. And, So oh, this could still be either total, and this could still be either total. So now we, I've got, the problem with Knight's Move puzzles as well is that it's so easy to miss something simple. Um, I'm sure that there is a way of disambiguating these. And it's probably a Knight's Move is seeing something. Ah. Uh, Sorry about this. What can we do? Is it no, we've done that one. We've used that one. We've got a two here. Six is up here. Sorry, this is just awful. Oh, one, look, can't go here. So one must be up there. Three. Three is a bit interesting here because it's quite powerful from a knight's move perspective. Look, it sees those squares by Sudoku and these two by knight's move. So three is locked into one of two places. Three down here. Yeah, and then it's locked into two places in box five as well. And two places in box six because this cell can't be a three now. Because if that was a three you'd see that square and that square because of the knight's move. So, three's got to be in one of these two cells. Threes. Ah, ha, ha, yeah, okay, there's another trick we can do with threes. You can't put three in either of those two cells in box seven because a three here, for example, definitely sees both of those squares because of the knight's move constraint and that three is the just symmetrical counterpart so you can't have threes in those cells so where does three go in box seven in one of two places so three is in one of these three cells and it's not that one because of these if a three here would see both of those because of the knight's move constraint so actually we've done remarkably well with threes Although I will admit it hasn't actually got us any digits. Um, ah, <laughs> I mean, it really hasn't. Okay, so. So what do we do now? We've got threes. 
twos, oh, two look, can't go there. So two's locked into those two cells. What have I not looked at? Is there some extra constraint that I'm meant to be seeing here? I've got a horrible feeling. It's almost like I've missed off a rule. Is there some area of the grid that is... Is there a cell that sees a load of other things by night's move? Like cells like this, for example. It's quite easy, well, at least for me, to miss the fact that this can't be three or four, because if it was a three or a four, it would remove both those digits from these squares. So this square, this square can be, it can be one, I think. It can't be two, three, four. Ah, oh, no, this has got loads of options. Five, six, seven, eight. This is not where we need to look. That square might be better. We've got... Actually, that square might be better because that sees 7 and 8 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2. What can that be? This square... Actually, I'm just going to put in all the options, if you don't mind. Uh, it can be... Look, I've gone to the, the tiny font, if that's apparently what happens when you put in nine options for a cell. Right, it can't be one, it can't be two, and the numbers grow as we get rid of them. It can't be six or nine. It can't be seven or eight. Yeah, and it can't be three and four. Exactly the same way that can't be three and four. This can't be three and four. So that is five. And that was not easy to see. Uh, that's not 5, therefore. This is not 5. Which means this... Oh, lovely, look. That means this is a 2-4 pair on the arrow. It means this square is a 5, and that gives us that arrow as well, of course. So we get the 9 and the 8 into the grid. We get 5... Oh, we get... No, we actually get 5 because of the given 5. It has to go there in box 1. Five is in one of those cells in box 7. We, uh, what else do we get? Do we get anything else? Can we resolve the 2-4 pair? We can. Uh, well, I can't. I can't resolve it. And then there's probably a way. That one's not 9 anymore. Look, that one's not 9 anymore. This is now a 7-8 pair. So 7 and 8 can't go into this domino. Um, 8 here and here. So 8 can't go there because of the knight's move. 8's got to be in the domino at the bottom. Check the 8's in the domino positions. You can't put 8 into those squares, but we don't know anything about 8's. You can't put 8's into these squares. Oh, that's evil. That is pure evil. A bit like Sam Kaplan lies the other day. Look, this 8, you can't put 8 into this domino because it would rule an 8 out of those squares. So where do you put 8 in column 7 of the grid? You can't go there. There's already an 8 in the box. You can't go here. It's a knight's move away from an 8. You can't go there. So it only goes here. That is not pleasant. That is difficult. That's a 7. That's a 7. That's an 8. That's an 8. 8 looks like it's... Oh, it's not. 8's very restricted in box 1, but just two places. Um, 8 in box 9 is two places. It can't be here because of the knight's move. 7 has got to be on the left-hand side of box 9. Oh no, <laughs> uh, it's quite interesting actually, after this beautiful logic at the start with the symbols, now we've basically pencil marked the symbols, it's effectively become just a knight's move puzzle and not, <laughs> not a very tractable one. I do quite a lot of knight's move puzzles because of our Chess Sudoku app. Um, 
and you would think I would be better at them. Somebody even left a comment the other day to say that um, they think that I, I deliberately don't spot numbers just so that people will comment. That is not true. I promise you, <laughs> I have no wish to appear to look stupid in these videos. Um, yeah, like there's a trick you can do there. These four squares have got to be one, two, three, and four. So this square, all of a sudden, is very restricted. It can't be one, two, three, or four, because if you try and put, for example, three in there, you now can't put a three in box three at all. So this square can't be one, two, three, four, or five. Uh, it can be six. It, uh, it can be seven can't be eight can't be oh can't be nine because of the knight's move so that one is very restricted um that one sees two and four so if you try and make this square two or four it would see both of those squares so this one Oh, this one's interesting. It can't be three. I've just, sorry, I've just noticed we've got three's pencil mark there. So that if you try and put three here, it sees both of those squares. So this one can't be one, two, three, or four, or five. Six, I've got, oh, six is given. So it's not six. It's not eight, it's not nine. Oh, that one is a, is a naked single. It can only be a seven, and that's going to give me that one. Ah, this is lovely. So this square is really strange, but I think it can't be anything other than seven. I'm just going to double check that. One, it definitely can't be. Two and four, it can't be. Three, it can't be because of the nonsense here. Five, six, eight, nine. That's correct. So this is a seven. This is a six. A seven is lovely because this one can't be seven because of the knight's move to this one. So that becomes a seven in the corner. That becomes an eight. Um, that means there's an eight on the left hand side of box seven. Nine, nine now. Where does nine go in box one? It can't go there, so it must go there. This square must be a two or a four. Nine must be in one of these two squares. So this box now needs two, three, four, and nine. That This one sees two and four. So, oh, it's, and it sees... <laughs> no comments about me not scanning to the bottom of the grid, please. I know. It's because I'm quite close to the screen. This is the only reason why, and I don't have like enormous Yoda eyes, so I can't like just look downwards and and see everything. Um, otherwise, I'm sure it would be fine. But look, this square here is, is a naked single. It can't be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a nine. These are two, three, and four. Two, no. Uh, oh, I'm sure something is... What is disambiguating this now? The answer is, I don't know. Nine is a bit restricted. Um, in box five, by this nine. This nine takes care of the central cell. This nine locks those squares out. So there's a nine in one of these two positions, which means by... Oh, no, it doesn't. It means by Sudoku, nine can only go here in box six. Can't go there because that because of that nine. And this nine is in the pencil mark of a three. So let's just make sure we don't go ahead of ourselves here. Nine can't go here by knight's move, so nine is in two positions in box nine. This square has to be a three now, which fixes that this square is a four. That's not four. Threes aren't here, 
So three is definitely in one of these two cells, so it's not here. That gives us a two, four pair, which means this one is three. There's a one there as well. So we've got a two, four pair in row two, a two, four pair in row three, and gibberish in row one. Now, can we keep this going? Yes, I can. Five. Where does five go in box nine? Box five, I should say. It goes, it can't go in those squares because of the knight's move. So it goes in the same positions as the nine. Five, uh, which, which gives us a five in box six. Which means there's a five down here in box nine. This five bounces back again into um, box five by the knight's move constraint. This is nine. This is five. Nine is now in one of those two positions in box eight. And in these two positions in box eight for five. Three. Oh. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Look. At some stage, I think we locked three into one of two places in this box, and I think the four took one of those positions. It does seem I've only got one left. And this three, let's just double check this. Three's, yeah, yeah, three is just by Sudoku, locked into that square. But this three is actually seeing that square by knight's move, which gives us a three here, which gives us a two here. That two is gonna be, oh, it's all kicking off. It's all kicking off now. This three has to go here. That's going to, I, I'm going to come back to this. It's going to give me fives, look, in this box. But let's just deal with the two here while we're here. So two, four, two, four, two. Get rid of the twos from the top row. This one sees that square. And I don't know how to do that. But anyway, let's come back down here again. Now, what did I want to look at? I think it was fives because if you look at where I've got fives pencil marked in boxes seven and eight they're both in row seven and row nine so we can ask where five goes in row eight of the grid it's definitely not here it's definitely not here in this box it must be in this position so because it can't be here it would be a third five in those two rows five two one one. One must be in one of these two squares in box four. So, ah, uh, in fact, this box. So we've only got one, six, and seven to place in this box, and that can't be one anymore. Seven is definitely in those two squares. Seven isn't here. Seven, ah, seven isn't here because if there's a seven here, it rules seven out of both of those cells. Seven is not here either. So seven is in this domino, which means seven is in this triple. This box, what do we need over here? We need one, four, and six. One, four, and six. That's not six. Still haven't got this arrow sorted out. That must be possible to resolve. There's almost certainly a random one or six pointing at this stuff. Uh, I don't know where it is. One, four, six, seven. This square. No, that's useless. One, four, one, four, six, seven along here. This square is interesting. This square sees six by this square is fascinating. Let's look at this. One, four, six, seven. This sees six by knight's move, so it's not six. It sees four by Sudoku, it's not four. If it's seven, you can't put seven in that domino. And you need to put one a seven in this domino. So this square is a one. 
that's not one whoopsie I mean not one I've just done the wrong thing there I don't want one in that square this is a six seven pair so ah now that's how we resolve the one six is not by knight's moves but by sudoku moves so that's a six six is in one of those squares this is not six anymore so we've got a one four pair in this column and this triple here is a six eight nine triple so let's change the pencil marking that can't be eight by sudoku or well knight's move sudoku nine can't go here and very slowly we're whittling away at codex puzzle aren't we um okay what now what do i need in this box i need four six and seven oh there's a six seven already in column one that's a four this is a six seven pair deadly pattern alert but presumably a knight's move will sort this out where is it where is the six or seven poking into this don't know oh look four four is pencil marked into the same position as five. Oh, and this five sees that one so we we resolve this immediately this has got to be four this has got to be five that's got to be five. Four is given now by Sudoku. It's got to go here. Four is either that is in one of two positions in box nine. These squares are six, seven, and nine in some order. These squares are one, two, and eight in some order. Let's do some tidying up. We can get rid of one there and two there. We're heading towards a fully pencil mark grid, aren't we? One look by Sudoku has got to go there. These squares are six, eight, and nine. It's the same as those. There's two, six, eight, nine triples at the bottom of um, these columns. Now those squares have got to be two and seven. What sees those? Anything? Uh, no this column we've got one three four and seven ah that's quite interesting look there's a lot of stuff over there that can't be in these squares one three four and seven are the options this can't have one or four in it because of the one four this can't have three or four in it and this one can't have three in it and that means that One, three, four, seven. Ooh, okay. Well, one question we can ask is where does two go in row eight? And I think the answer is there. It doesn't seem to be possible to place it anywhere else. It's definitely not there, definitely not here. Yeah, okay, we've got rid of two here because of the knight's move. So there is only one position for two which gives us seven. Oh, the seven's enormous. Look at the seven. Look at the damage it does to this, this triple. You can't now put seven here or here. So you have to put seven here, but not that also gives us the three. That gives us the four at the top, the one and the three, the one and the four. This square now must be a one by Sudoku. That's not a one over there. The only place for one in box seven is now known. This is a four. Again, Sudoku helping us out. That square should be a two. This two is lovely. It's our friend. It fixes this two eight pair. This eight sees the six over here. That's a nine, therefore that's an eight. 6, 8 means this is 9, which means this is 7. This, seven's, this 7 sorts out the 6, 7 uh, problem at the top. Look, that's now 6, 6, 7, 7 in order to keep things a knight's move away. And we should be able to do this. Yeah, the 8's going to fix it all, isn't it? 8 goes here, 6 goes, watch it, 8 goes here, 6 goes here, 6 goes here, 9 goes here. We click check yes wow that is a very very clever puzzle just three given digits and some real thinking 
that I had to do. I'm, I mean, there may be another way of thinking about that, but the way I found was very, very nice indeed. That you know, you have to think about both symbols together. It's really clever. I mean, it's what we've come to expect from Codec. He is absolutely first class constructor and I really enjoyed that. I hope you guys did too. Forgive me the slowness around the night's move parts. Um, I just find them difficult to see consistently and um, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>